think it couldn't come soon enough, frankly, and I think the pace at which research organisations and their focus um, you know, is really, really uh, important in terms of the change and the shift that we need. So we had a lot of research you know, on essentially how we best use carbon pricing, market-based mechanisms, how we use a little bit of consumer, all the sort of voluntary uh, or market-based tools, and we really didn't have enough research on how to use the, let me say, the apparatus of state machinery, command and control and regulation, and what we environmental lawyers, you know, teach in our first uh, term, you know, all the traditional instruments that you would normally use to regulate an, in, an industry and a set of emissions that are dangerous. So we did away with that for about 15 years, and as a result, we're at the point where we are in a climate emergency, and I like nailing it, you know, for what it is. That is what we are in. And I think the appeal of uh, Extinction Rebellion is to, to say that, to say in a very clear, understandable way that we are already in a climate emergency and we're not at the point of which we're sort of preventing it or um, we're not going to try and disguise from the general public that we can somehow prevent things from happening and that it's all going to be very slow and um, incremental in terms of its change. It's not. Um, I think I want to make a few, a few sort of points and then I can ramble on. So, um, the emergency framing is where I think everyone needs to be. Uh, the IPCC has said we've got 12 years to prevent a huge escalation in the, in the, in the magnitude of risks and the number of people who will lose their lives, who will lose their livelihoods, who will lose their land, uh, on top of all of the other challenges that they are facing at the moment. So um, that's not 12 years time that we can think about it. We have to think about and make this very rapid transition right now, like from day one, day two, week one, week two. And I think I would um, urge the, you to have a look at um, the, the Club of Rome have just issued a climate emergency plan. And the, and the Club of Rome emergency plan really sort of, I think, is starting to frame this in the way that we should be thinking about it. The second document, I'm going to hold it up if you can see it, is the Select Committee on the Green New Deal and its <coughs> proposal that has been put forward by a number of groups, including the newly elected um, uh, representative uh, in, in the US, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And essentially what they're proposing is a Select Committee this time in the Congress that sets up a, with a mandate to come up with a 10-year plan to achieve net zero and to achieve it on the basis of just transition and including uh, uh, <coughs> fair uh, uh, entitlement and inclusive access um, to communities of colour and those who have missed out and very much focus around we're trying to solve the inequality problems which are the legacy sometimes of racism and colonialism and, and so forth. And thank you Clive very much for saying that and uh, I just want to take a minute to say you know most of the developing countries who are going to be um, at the climate change negotiations in Katowice are also fighting for the recognition of loss and damage, which was an entire article included in the Paris <laughs> Agreement because they recognised that 1.5 will still leave them with enormous consequences, many of which uh, are being uh, borne out today. So uh, they are fighting for that, and uh, it took them 10 years to get the 1.5 included in the international negotiations. So, Final couple of things, you know, as a lawyer, so big picture things, you know, what do we do? We create new laws when there's a big problem. And we've done that, we've done that internationally, we've got three treaties, they're entered into force, you know, the Climate Change Convention, the Kyoto Protocol, now the Paris Agreement, we've created new laws here in the UK, the Climate Change Act, happy birthday to it, it's for the 10th year. But you know, none of those frameworks add up to two degrees or one point five. They are all incompatible with the basic goals set out in Paris. Paris was incompatible in terms of the, 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 the package of uh, commitments that were uh, brought forward. So I think we do need rapidly to go to this framing of the emergency mode. The other things that lawyers do is you know, help accelerate implementation. Um, you know, that involves a package of removing shit legislation that's so incompatible, that's on the book, excuse my language, uh, and, and, and providing carrots or sweeteners or financial resources to help the transition. And lastly, you know, they also advance um, ambition and uh, uh, rapid rollout by litigation and non-violent direct action. That's always been an important part of challenging entrenched political power.
power and structures. And I think what has been totally under researched is the role of NPDA, Nonviolent Direct Action, in entrenched, powerful systems which are societal wide, global wide, and that need to change focus. So I would urge RTA to have a, a look at that.